Okay, so I'd like to welcome you, Don Carter, to Mindful Social. This will be broadcast on my podcast. It'll also be on YouTube. And of course, it'll be shared here on Blab with the world. I would like to invite everybody to post questions. We love questions about Twitter, about mindfulness, any of those wonderful things. And uh, Don, why don't you tell people a little bit about you and uh, about Twitter Scope? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. That that was very nice. Even though I was uh, made my uh, fashionable late entrance. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Twitter Scope basically is um, a daily uh, Periscope. It's just a way to get a little bit of of uh, Twitter information out, out into the Twitter sphere. Um, I have, I don't know if you've had this experience, but I've had a lot of friends um, or in just casual conversations talk about how uh, Twitter sucks or how they had a, a, an account that just sits there dormant. I, I call it an albatross around one's neck. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's there. People feel guilty. I know I should be doing something with it, but I've never, you know, I never really gotten uh, past the inertia or really just the fear. And so I started Twitter scope early right before Christmas of this year to just kind of, I, I call it pushing back the veil of ignorance that surrounds Twitter one scope at a time. <laughs> Just because I've seen and been on Twitter since about 2009 and I've seen how it's helped me connect with other people, with uh, prospects. Um, and I just I've used it professionally. So I just wanted to share some of that learning. So that's that's what was the genesis behind it is. So and I get to hold crazy signs. I get to do <laughs> things like this. I get to. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it's I have fun with it. So for people who don't know what Twitter scope is, can you tell them a little bit about Periscope and how that works and when you do it? Oh, sure. Pitch, yeah. Pitch, so woman pitch. Oh, okay. Well, I, I well, you're dragging it out of me. Okay. So, um, so basically I just use this with Periscope. Periscope is just a great live streaming tool that makes anyone who has a phone, a broadcaster. And so Periscope is, I've been on Periscope since about August. And the nice thing about that is, you know, in the olden days, you needed to have a fancy, you had to have equipment and lighting and all kinds of craziness. And because the technology has gotten to the point where you don't need a lot of that stuff, um, now, that's a double-edged sword because you can get a lot of crap. You know, mm -hmm. people are posting nonsense, but it also, for people that um, resist the urge, you know, they, you can actually use it as a teaching tool. So mm -hmm. what's nice is that you can just uh, broadcast out little things. Um, some people will do long, long scopes. A video is called a scope. Um, they only last, I want to say, for 24 hours unless you save them to a place called Catch. And so you can you connect catch.me to your Periscope account. And so all of my old scopes are, are kept there. So, yeah. And are, are you taking questions for your scopes or are you coming up with this all on your own? Kind of a combination. So it's one of these things when you commit to doing something like a daily show. Oh, Lordy, it is. It's a commitment. It's work. <laughs> well, I mean, as you know, Janet, I mean, you've been doing, you know, mindful social and even just saying, mm -hmm. I want to commit for my business. I want to commit to something once a week. That's a commitment. You are like Amy Schmittauer says, you know, you're making a promise to your viewers. You're making a promise to your Absolutely. community. And so um, something like a daily, a daily scope is a commitment. And even though I keep it to a short format, it is, it gets inconvenient. It, it conflicts and it makes me late to things that I shouldn't be late to. <laughs> and I mean, you just, I mean, life has to go on. So sometimes I'll be at some place and I mean, people are, are gracious. I mean, if it's late or whatever, but I, I want to show that I'm, I'm committed. But when people tweet out questions using this hashtag, I find the questions and then I use that for the material on, on what I scope about. That's great. So, yeah. Well, so one of the things questions. that I thought was wonderful about you doing this is that it really epitomizes the generosity that real Twitter users have. And, you know, <laughs> so often we hear people whining about, oh, Twitter's full of spam. Well, if you're following spammers, Twitter's full of spam. Yeah. But if you're following people who are curating content and sharing generously, really just to help other people, that's the new way of marketing. And I really believe that it's it's a very yeah. mindful way. Um, how do you feel about curation and, and how that works for people who want to build their business, but they don't want to be shouting me, 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 me by my stuff all the time? 
<laughs> well, you, you, you've, you've hit a couple really good themes. I mean, just the idea of, of um, it's a new way of doing business. Mm -hmm. I think that that is an absolute uh, thing to keep in mind. Um, the whole idea of, of curation is I want to, um, I, and again, I, I can't take much credit because all I'm doing is just copying and modeling off of what I've seen other people do. I mean, there are folks, um, you know, like you, there are folks like, um, you know, Brian Fans. Or, or, or Kim Garst. There are people that are within the social world that are, I love how you said real Twitter users. <laughs> there are people that are, that say it, but then you actually go to their tweet stream and it's like, oh, no, there's, mm -hmm. it's all just me, me, whatever. And so I think watching how other people are generous and going, you know what, this isn't okay. You know, it endears me to them. You know, it moves me down the the no like trust continuum, and um, and I know that they're doing that on purpose. So I think the idea of being able to um, curate, whether it's um, well, I mean, to curate, you you have to a understand what they want. You know, mm -hmm. what people want. So I I think of well, what would be of interest to me um, if my Twitter stream represents my industry or people that are you know peripherally interested in marketing or those types of things. Then I need to be um, listening and like my, you would say mindful of what would bring value to them. So curation is the other flip side of listening. I mean, listen, you have to know in order to deliver something that would be of value. Hmm. So those of you who don't know what curation is, and I'm sure you probably do, but I'm going to tell you anyway, <laughs> curation is really the process of finding other people's content that is relevant to the market that you want to talk to and then sharing that. And sometimes you just share it because it's brilliant all on its own. But a lot of times you add your own input and that's kind of where the conversations come from. You know, I think Don, you and I first talked about Twitter chats Gosh, maybe a year ago now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, those conversations start from something that you share. And this is a way for you to really get people engaged. So what other engagement tips do you have kind of around curation? Mm, wow, what a good question. Um, <laughs> engagement. Well, I probably don't do as good a job of that. Um, one, you know, Thanks, quick Sarah. one quick way is to um when you are, you know, again, passing along information, if you're on Twitter, you could do that a couple of ways. You can just do a straight retweet or you can quote. And so um, to be able to put it out as a quote and give yourself that space to put some kind of response like, yes, I, or, you know, so you can always just do an agreement thing. Um, that's, you know, one way of adding your own spin to um, what you're sharing out. But another, another way is to, you know, ask a question like, do you agree? Something like that. So to even just prompt something with a question um, is another way. Um, you know, jumping into a Twitter chat again, that is, I mean, think about it. It's, it's your eavesdropping in on a public conversation. That's all a, a Twitter chat is. And to be able to live tweet out some of that content is another way to um, get engagement. Um, so if, for instance, yesterday was an excellent one with uh, Brian Solis on Brian uh, Kramer's H2H chat, and it was just gold. I mean, he was just every sentence was like, ah, I could tweet that. But to take something and then to put that into a tweet and send that out again, that is a way of curating content, uh, which is, hey, I got to hang out at this great conversation. And here's something I think that would be of value for you. So I think that's a way to increase engagement too, is to show up to those events and you're getting value from them, from someone else's generous act, but then now you can be respond with generosity by filtering and maybe sharing just a snippet of that. That way the conversation, oh, so now I can't hear what just went. I lost sound. Yeah, I lost. Oh, it's not me. Oh, okay. Janet can't hear you. Are you mute? I, no, you're not muted. I got no sound. Oh, it's Janet. Okay. So you guys can hear me. You can hear. I can hear you. Yep, yep. One there more you go. time. Now I can hear you, Janet. <laughs> you know, technology. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> uh, so 
The thing about Twitter chats that make it so incredibly powerful is that they are around a conversation like Mindful Social. We started it there on Twitter and we moved it to Blab just to get a little deeper. But it is a um, really powerful way to get to know people that are like minded. And when you share information within those chats, people look to you then as somebody who knows what they're talking about. And it's a really great way to, to build authority by being generous. I love no. that. Yeah, it's it's a way, if you think about it, it's, you know, generosity can be generous. You can be generous with your time. You can be generous with your expertise. There's also an aspect of, of uh, you're generous to that host. I mean, I never really had thought about that until mm -hmm. I started hosting one myself. <laughs> When you have people show up, that's a gift. And, and in a way you are, you're identifying yourself as, you know, when I'm part of this, you are definitely getting a benefit out of it. So it's not being manipulative. I mean, you're, you're consuming the content that they're providing, but it's also affirming what they're doing and saying, you know, this is striking a chord with me. I am learning something from the guests that you are hustling up to find. So, yeah. And that's a really important too. Even if it isn't on a Twitter chat, if you're sharing someone else's post, you're validating them. And, you know, it's kind of like blog posts. You write this blog post and you put your entire heart into it and you just, you really mean everything that you put into the post and then you get no comments. It's awful. <laughs> but when you start getting comments, you feel validated, you feel heard. And so when you share somebody else's content, especially if you say something nice about the content or add to it, or make the discussion deeper, that's a great way to really validate somebody, be generous to them, and it almost always returns to you by starting a new relationship. Yeah, I love that. And I think you you literally hit it on the head when you said relationship. I mean, that is generosity is a interpersonal dynamic. I mean, it is something it's a it's relational. And so it's the grease, you know, that that keeps human um, interaction, you know, kind of running smoothly, um, or one of the, the grease spots that you can use. And so I think that especially as marketers, when people start looking at prospects as, as, um, you know, that, that they're just items or they're just, you know, lines on a database or they're just, you know, numbers, mm -hmm. then it takes that whole generosity thing out of the equation of, well, that doesn't, it wouldn't make sense. Why Nobody cares. Add, yeah. Why would you add that to a thing? I just, I just need numbers. I just need sales. And mm -hmm. I think when we can look at, it almost takes like a, not a restraint because, uh, but it just takes like a long view of, of, uh, you know, relationships take time. You know, you don't just, you know, meet someone. I mean, again, that's why I think auto DMs are so appalling to me because you've just met someone and they're asking you for stuff. It's like, you wouldn't, I wouldn't do that in real life. You know, I wouldn't just, Oh, nice to meet you here. Buy my, this do this. I mean, that just is, it, it grates against my social radar. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh it, it does me too. And I got one the other day that the person said, this isn't one of those horrible DMS that everybody hates and then tried to sell me something. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So I'd like to ask you guys that are watching, what do you think about auto DMs? Do you use them? Do you think that they're a really negative thing? What's your position on that? Um, and, you know, it, it really, I suppose there are times that an auto DM is okay. Um, sometimes maybe a thank you for following me, but it doesn't really feel real to me. I just, I think they're bogus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, and it, again, it, it is, it's um, having a proper understanding of like relationships. I mean, now some people are going to be, you know, instant BFFs or, you know, whatever on social and that's, that's fine. Every different personality has a place. I mean, that's why Twitter is so great. It, you know, you can be who you are, but right. you absolutely don't need to be, um, um, you know, in someone's face immediately. Right. Yeah. yeah. At the beginning. So. Before you even... <laughs> you really have a conversation or know who they are. I think it's different if, you know, you send somebody a DM that you've connected with, you know, mm -hmm. that you know, or you've had a conversation with before. I don't have a problem with DMs, but if you auto DM me, you are so not going to be followed. I just, yeah. I don't, I unfollow you immediately. That's but if funny. you send me a, an authentic DM, that's okay. And I, I think that's the difference. You know, I, I think we're so focused on the numbers on Twitter that, 
we're not focused on the quality and the quantity and the authenticity relationships, any of those things that maybe they seem like buzzwords, but, but they're not really buzzwords. It's the only yeah. way Twitter works. Yeah. And I think you had started um, at the beginning saying that there are, would you just call it like real Twitter users, <laughs> that there mm -hmm. are people you can, you can spot a real Twitter user by looking at their tweet stream. That, I mean, that's, that's just, it's a, there's a digital record of their interaction with people. And if it's all mm -hmm. just broadcast, broadcast, then you get a sense. I mean, that, that really is the way um, that they interact with people. And so if you see, you know, interspersed with their great content that they're sharing or their blog posts or their, you know, calls to action, whatever, <sighs> interspersed with that are an occasional app mention or those types of things, then it's like, oh, okay, that person is is actually interact interacting. Yeah, very true. And I think that uh, you know, you everybody should step back once a week at a minimum and actually read their own Twitter stream because we forget what we're saying. And if all it is is about your peanut butter sandwich and your cat and your dog, <laughs> you know, okay, cats are cool, dogs are nice. But what else have you got to say that's going to make it worth it for us to want to even talk to you? And how are you helping other people? You know, what are you doing to make Twitter a better place? Yeah. Yeah. I love. Um, so here's another another example of that. You can be generous. Generosity can be exhausting. And I think that it's it's important to know that there are tools and things. And when I say, you know, automating things like Madeline Sklar. I've learned so much from her, you know, even things like using tweet jukebox, which I had never even heard of, which you can basically almost like load it with some of your evergreen blog posts or videos or blab you know, links or whatever that from past videos and or YouTube links, whatever. And you can basically fill your jukebox with that. And then just periodically every six hours, every four hours, it's sending out a link again, but that's generosity. It's automating your generosity, mm -hmm. but it's not overwhelming so that it creates more bandwidth. For Wait a me. minute. Did you just coin automated generosity? Well, that, <laughs> that's probably not. Well, but, but it's again, it's because there's generosity with different things, right? There's mm -hmm. generosity with interaction. And, and that's the part that's fun. That's the part that, that is the, you know, that's the part that gives me energy is getting to right. interact with people. And so if, if I can save myself time by giving out my, you know, in a, again, reasonable fashion, it's not spamming people, but it's like, you know, there may be people that missed my, you know, one of my Twitter scopes about, um, how do I scope when I'm an introvert? I mean, that one came out up today on the rotation. And it's like, that was a gift for every introvert in the world that's ever feared social media. It's I'm like, going to have to go watch, watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got, a, I've got a 17 year old daughter who is, and then my husband, and I've been married you know, for 28 years and he's an introvert. And so I've learned a few things about introverts and, and how social media terrify, can terrify them. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, this is my little piece of generosity that I want to give, um, you know, you know, put out there because again, it's honoring my introvert family members. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also going to validate, you know, there are introverts out there that are That's that the, the thought of interacting on social media terrifies them. And so, you know, are there things that I can do? So I didn't mean a rabbit trail about that, but just the whole idea that we can automate the parts so that we're free to interact. No, I love that. You know, I think that's the whole thing is that you know, we can help other people just by sharing great information. And that comes back to us, you know, and that when people say, well, that's not marketing, that's just sending out stuff. Well, it isn't really, it's professional development, it's mm. education, it's education for you. It's helping build your brand around what it is that you post. And if your brand, you know, starts to wander off, well, then maybe you should pay paying a little more attention to what your stream looks like and going back and reading it. Great but, point. you know, I love what you're doing on Periscope. I think it's really great. Oh, thank you. And again, I, I say that because this is something that I'm, I watch other people do. Mm -hmm. And and that's not to say that using live streaming to just show part of your world. Like, I mean, I saw Chocolate Johnny had jumped on here. There are people that, that share aspects of their world. That's a generous act. 
a generous mm -hmm. act to me as well. So I don't think that that's necessarily a bad, you know, it's not always about developing content. Sometimes sharing your world is a gift as well. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, um, Annabella, A-A-M-P-T-Y, I always forget how to say, but I mean, sh her stream, her scopes, her live stream is very generous to me because it shows me parts of Panama that I'd never seen. So mm -hmm. uh, we have to think that sometimes it is, sorry about that, I got to turn my phone off. Um, sometimes our generosity is not just about the good, the content that we're giving people. Sometimes it's attention. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's affirmation. Sometimes it's just encouragement. Sometimes it's just saying thank you. Um, how many times have you been discouraged of, you know, dang it, I've been putting this, you know, Twitter chat together each week. And I mean, wouldn't that feel nice to just have someone go, you know what? I don't know. Just thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Absolutely. doing that. I, I, just recognizing the um, countless hours <laughs> <that laughs> rustling up, you know, whatever it is, but just that, that little thank you can mean a lot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's huge. And, you know, it really is. Um, it's really important that we think about that in the long term. And I, I, Leonard's got a question. He says it's a selfish question. But how is my Twitter feed? Do I bore you? Neither of you bore me. I learned from you both. No, you don't bore me. I just like to go on record. Leonard's been on the Twitter chat so many times. And, you know, he's really always had great insights. And I think that's one of the things that really has been Bob. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, Robert Leonard. Yeah. Yes. Bob. <laughs> sorry, Robert. Jeez <laughs> Louise. See, that's the problem with moving these things over. I can't read them fast enough. Anyway, he's always had really great insights on the chat. And, you know, I've appreciated that. And one of the things that happens with a Twitter chat that doesn't happen um, in a lot of other platforms but does happen on live stream like Periscope and Blab too, is that you see things going on in the chat. Maybe there's people in the chat that you know really well or you know have a lot to say. They're working. They don't have time to respond. So they'll pitch in with one thing. They'll jump out. They'll work. They'll come back. They'll come back to it later. So even if, say, you're Periscoping and you're not getting a lot of people watching it all at once, don't worry about it because people will come back to these things and just keep putting out that really great content. And you'll see that, you know, people will come back and comment and let you know if you're doing a good job or you're not. And no, Bob, you're not boring. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, that's that's such a sweet question. I think um, there that you can't talk about generosity without throwing in the um, the dark side of it, which is manipulation. Um, I think, you know, if if any of us in our and again, as marketers, there is a line, there is a line. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that um, there's a check, there's a question one needs to ask oneself of, you know, if I'm giving this out and I'm never getting those, you know, what you know, people aren't responding or blog post comments or whatever that response mechanism is, if the lack of that is bumming me out or depressing me, then I, I might just step back and go, well, am I truly being, you know, am I I, yes, I want interaction, but am I doing this because it's the right thing to do too? Right. You know, is it because, because there will be times that you will not get in any information and you just feel like you're just throwing this stuff out into, you know, the Twitter sphere, or, you know, I keep creating these videos and no one's watching them or whatever. But I think again, it's that long haul look, you know, of, mm -hmm. you know, am I, am I, am I exercising my, my generosity muscle and being, you know, other centered and then, if that is part of my brand, like when, you know, people say, you know, brand lives in someone's mind in your consumer or your prospect's mind. Mm -hmm. your, and then if that part of my brand is I want to be known for that, then I need to be not just saying I'm generous. I need to just model it. And um, anyway, so, oh you know, if my I, God. So yeah. That would, spend, that's my conviction for the morning. <laughs> spend more time being generous than saying you're generous for certain you know, and we do see an awful lot of people who will go out and, you know, they will share and share and share, but you can read in the subtext that it's all about them. And a lot of times, you know, if you're, I say that you should share 80% of the time should be either mentioning people or, you know, talking to them, having a conversation or sharing information and only 20% of it should be about you. 
But sometimes I see people who will go, oh, okay, well, there was an article written about me over here, and here's somebody reviewing my book, and it's still all about them. And there's no sense of generosity and what's our mm -hmm. feeling about you then as a person. Right. You know? Yeah. It's, I heard someone um, yesterday um, <laughs> was actually my pastor talked about how many people put posts on their Facebook and like them themselves, you know, and that <laughs> is like, you're kind of, what? Well, yeah, you like them. You like that post because you said it. So Hello. yeah. But I think that um, I, I, it really goes back to like an old Seth Godin um, um, snippet of, you know, what makes something remarkable and it will be talked about, you know, purple cows or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like you, if the work you do is spectacular or it's of a craftsmanship level or it's um, outstanding, it will get talked about. And so I think that there's a, there's almost like a, ah, it like takes some of that burden off to be able mm -hmm. to say, you know what, can I just create something spectacular or model something? And then, then that will be, you know, that will be talked about as part of your brand just because you're modeling it. Right. Yeah. You really have to live it if you're going to try to do it because Twitter is not a short term thing. You know, I don't know what your experience with it is, but how long do you think if someone is a new Twitter user, mm -hmm. how long should they be marketing before they really expect to see return or whatever their intentions were that they set for using Twitter? What kind of timeline are they looking at? Wow. That's, I, I think that's such a good question. Um, Janet, it, it, I mean, I've been on Twitter since 2008, late 2008 and have, um, live tweeted events. That was a way that I could give, and I don't have tremendous, huge numbers in Twitter followers, but the followers I have are real pretty mm. focused. And so, and I, I'm happy with the folks that I follow. Um, but it really depends on what your business is. Again, it's the, um, it's going to come back. I mean, there will be aspects of people that, you know, you really want to be is investing in your fan, not to say fan base, but you know, your, your friends, not followers. I, I saw someone that had posted that. I mean, the idea of, would I want a friend to treat me like this and just have that kind of a mindset going in? And so uh, time-wise, I think it's, it's going to be different. You know, if you're showing up in the right places, getting the right, making the right kinds of connections, if you really are targeted and who you're, who you're, I'm like going after, but who you're trying to connect with, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't, you know, it, maybe it shouldn't take as long. It depends on what you're offering as well. Well, and everybody knows, I mean, you and I are both marketers. We've got marketing backgrounds. We do this for a living. We're consultants. And it's a little different, I think, for us than it is someone who is marketing a very focused business, you know, and trying to build out a very focused niche because I live tweet events too. We go to these events all the time and live tweet them. And if they're not really targeted with what our mission is, it can be confusing to people. Mm -hmm. And you'll lose a whole bunch of followers because they're like, yeah, I'm not really interested in the toast conference. You know, that's not, I don't like toast or whatever it is. Pickles <laughs> is my favorite one, but you know, it's really, uh, it's difficult sometimes to see where we're going. And if we start tweeting for clients, then that makes it confusing too. Um, the focus niches, you know, are just easier to market on it if you happen to be able to stay in a niche. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. I think one way that as a, for instance, a business can ex, um, express their generosity is by um, giving up some of their stage, giving up some of their platform to their mm. users. And so I, I, in fact, I just did, I just did my Twitter scope this morning <laughs> um, about, um, you know, about a company that's a small business, that's a, it's a small business. I mean, they've been in business for about 40 years, but they're, you know, a restaurant chain here in Southern California called Miguel's Jr. Amazing mm. beans. I'm just, and I'm not even, I don't even like beans. Usually when I go to a Mexican restaurant, I say double rice, no beans, and but not at Miguel's Jr. I love their beans. Mm. So but anyway, but I was talking about their Twitter stream, even offering user generated content is a generous act to me from a business. Yes. It's saying I'm giving up some of my platform, some of my space, my Twitter feed for your guys's content, because mm -hmm. I think you guys rock. And I think that's a great way. Um, it was a great example that I saw that I see them. All I do is just is eavesdrop on people's Twitter streams and report <laughs> on what I see. So it's not really me. <laughs> it's what I'm seeing other people do that. That's excellent.
But that's really cool to support them because, you know, they need the support right now probably too because they're like everybody else going, wow, is anybody listening to this? Does anybody care? So let's talk about that a little bit when sure. let's switch to brands mm -hmm. and influencers. So let's talk about brands a little bit and how coming back and actually talking to their users can be useful to them. Duh, but still. <laughs> it is Hi, huge. Mark. Yeah, Mark, it is. I mean, A, you know what? I mean, if if what I'm creating, A, I want it to be remarkable, but two, I want it to resonate with a tribe of, of buyers and I want it to delight them and to be part of an experience, the whole experience of them experiencing me as a brand, then um, how could you not listen? You're going to be, you're going to be creating stuff in a vacuum. You know, mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I, I really, and I think that's what the beauty of social media is, is that it has given people talk about live streaming gives people access to brands like they've never had before access to celebrities, access to behind the scenes at the, you know, the uh, golden globe awards or whatever, but mm -hmm. you have unprecedented access with live stream to a brand or to influencers. But I think brands have to remember we as marketers have unprecedented access to what our users are talking about and saying about us. If we're listening, if we're listening, exactly. If we value that. And, and so I think that that is going to separate. I think the, the brands that are going to kill it are the ones that are that value that and that, well, and it's not just listening. It's being able to listen and then execute on what you hear, because sometimes there are organizational issues or, um, systems issues within your organization that don't allow you to respond oh. uh, to what you're hearing. I mean, I came from That's corporate the America. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I know about that where it's like, you're these really frustrated innovators running mm -hmm. in your halls, you know, that get hung up on <laughs> stupid, you know, uh, infrastructure, you know, issues. Well, you have this insight, but it can't get back to where it needs to get to, to adjust, you know, whether it's product development or, or solve some, you know, service problem or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And Mark says that uh, he represents some extremely large brands and wherever he engages, it almost stuns the person they're engaging with. And, you know, I've had that happen to me sometimes where I was like, wow, okay, I'm in this hotel. And, and I said, wow, the rooms are amazing. And I not only got a tweet, but you know, I got a call from the manager saying, we just love that you said, you know, it's like, wow, really cool. And I'm not a huge influencer. There are a lot of people that have a lot more fan bases than I do. But as you said, with your fan base, my fan base is engaged. You know, it's, I only follow people that I really care about. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, it makes a difference, I think. And I don't think that big brands look at that so much. Um, you know, they don't look at whether somebody has real influence or they're just, you know, they went out and bought 300,000 followers. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I love what Christian says, talking to your customers and them talking to you just makes sense. They're the people who matter most and the engagement, bringing them into your world and getting into theirs. It creates a connection that's more meaningful. And Absolutely. oh my gosh, I think that that is, I mean, you just, you basically just summarized, you know, that whole. <laughs> That whole we can concept. All go home of, now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And I, even Mark saying, "Well, what does that tell us? What the norm is? Mm -hmm. it, the norm is is that people are still back in the you know the eighties or whatever where 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 brands just uh, you know say their thing and there isn't that that feedback loop. And it's not just brands. I mean, we're beating up on. I mean, I I deal with you know um, civic engagement and you know city entities are the same way. Any any oh, institution. Okay. Is going to is going to have that, um, you know, and I think that one of the one of the calls and challenges to I'll, I call us the the um, the enlightened, you know, the ones that get that oh, you listening is important, and yes, we get that, but but you know, there but the grace of God go I. I mean, I used to not care, I used to not, <laughs> and so I think that we as the enlightened need to be gracious. I call them gracious inv inviters, you know, into a different way. We need to say, you know, there is a different way. Um, and I think that, um, it, you know, so I, I feel personally that that's part of my calling is to be able to bring, um, you know, that kind of learning, that kind of early adopter eyeballs and then turn around and go, this is what this could mean for you. And so um, 
I, I just think that that's, yeah, most brands aren't. But again, rather than getting um, pissed off at the brands that don't get it, I think success is the best revenge. So it's like, you know what? No. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna run circles around you because you're not listening to your customers, but I am. So yeah, let's show them, baby. Because <laughs> you know, we show can only start running up and down the halls screaming for so long before we just start banging our heads into the walls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, we, when you work with brands, there are some brands that really do get it, but there are so many that just don't. And controlling the messaging to the point <sighs> that you as the social media person can't respond in a timely fashion or have to respond in a very lockstep sort of way is not helping anyone. Yes. It's certainly not helping the brand, but it's oh, definitely not helping the consumer on the other end. Yes. It's just craziness. Yeah, I I, com I just completely agree, and it, it's uh it's one of those things that um oh yeah that would be great to have my yeah Mark's gonna network. jump in hey nice <laughs> if his camera works there he is yeah. hi Mark hey can you hey, guys Mark yeah. yeah nice oh, nice to meet you Mark likewise <laughs> likewise Janet and I go back a ways but uh, way back yeah so uh, you, you know I was gonna type this in you guys might may or may not agree with this, but I, I actually tweeted it out yesterday on behalf of one of the brands. And it was, I said, where did we, where did we just get so hung up on the whole influencer marketing thing? And it, you know, it, it bothers me to no end that, that we're all so, uh, it's, it's, we're putting our eggs in a weird basket, you know, and, <clears throat> and you guys are hitting on it where it's, it, it's not about influencers, it's about customers and it's about consumers, but we're relying on influencers to get to the consumer, to get to the customer. And it just seems like a convoluted way to, to try and get a brand message out, don't you think? I don't know. Totally, totally agree. I think, you know, the whole name influencer is so uh, focused uh, because when I, I work with brands that do outreach for influencers and, and we do that, but the people that they want to connect with are the ones who have the biggest traffic to their blog or, you know, the biggest numbers on Twitter. I can make the numbers on Twitter be whatever I want to. And it doesn't mean that I'm intelligent or have anything to say or have any influence at all over the people that I talk to. Although I do, but right. you know, it's just bogus. No. And, and I think where I get derailed is when I look at the, <clears throat> the influencers and their engagement and it's very self-promotional mm -hmm. um, and I would say 75% of what they do is self-promotional and mm -hmm. you know we don't need to name names but they're obviously in this for that reason so I don't know if right. that's necessarily the, the best interest of the brands and you know back in the early days of social we used to say well if you could get your product for example in the hands of Justin Bieber who has Right. And, and so we were talking, there was always this delineation between uh, influencer and, um, and influence and popularity. Right. Hmm. And <clears throat> there's, I mean, I just got a, an email the other day and said, Hey, let's, let's start following these 50 influencers, uh, CMOs. And I started going down the list and I'm like, God, I know this person. They're just not this one, not this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> but it's Janet, true Janet it was like 10 of them I was like oh I'd follow that person the rest of them like this is waste of time waste of time forget it forget it and <clears throat> I just think that you know Twitter notwithstanding it's it's not going away let's understand that but it's just a matter of okay you know if we want to connect with customers if we want to put you know if we want to have that then we there has to be a better way than influencer marketing and that's that's a personal opinion and I, i'm curious as to how you both think about that well you know i think it really is the whole problem the the words influencer marketing that's yeah. the problem it's not conversation marketing it's not engagement marketing it's influencer marketing and those are totally different things mm -hmm. and for me to pay a blogger to put posts that you wrote and they cut and paste them into their blog and then say, I believe in this company and call that an influencer post. It's mm -hmm. bullshit. 
I know. We just we can't be doing this because nobody nobody cares. I mean, we all see it for what it is. Unless there's a discount in there, I don't care. Well, that's nobody what I've always does. said. You know, I've always said that. Hey, look, the reason why the, the majority of the followers of brands is that these people are hoping to get something from that brand. It has nothing to do with just this unbelievable love between us and the brand. And, you know, we're hoping to have these conversations. Invariably, it's really about what can I get? You know, what's that? Where's that value proposition if I follow that brand? That seems to be more prevalent on Facebook, less on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> you know, I think that real conversations probably exist more on Twitter than they do Facebook. But again, I am O, right? Dawn, what do you think? <laughs> I love I love the, the conversation. I think it brings up a couple things. I don't think that it's completely uh, useless because I think that there is a role. Because if you think about it, it's the influencer is influencing someone. And if they've got just the sheer numbers, that it, it is not a waste to be able to engage in with those folks. Even my my personal opinion of them notwithstanding, you know, like I may know, ah, oh, well, they don't really even, they're not very engaging or they're not doing Twitter right or whatever my mm -hmm. judgment is on them. But for my brand, on behalf of the brand, it may make sense. So I don't think that I wouldn't completely throw them out. But I think as a as a brand, again, it's doing the right thing. And here's an example. Um, how would you like to throw a party? And um, as you know, your guests come, you you have your host saying, oh, you know what, you're making some kind of judgment on you. Oh, you're not as important. So I'm not going to talk with you. I mean, yeah. how rude. You have to sit at the kids table. Yeah. How rude would that be? And, and I think the closest equivalent of that was, I mean, I hosted a Twitter chat where I had like three people show up and, and it was disheartening for me. And, you know, I, that I need to do some adjusting on what is it I'm providing, but can it, then all of a sudden it almost becomes like an integrity thing. Like, can I have as much of a good conversation with you and deliver as much value to you as if you were the only person here, whether yeah, you're an influencer or not. And, you know, you're going to, go through and, and come across in your digital travels, people that have, you know, 200 followers, 400 numbers that in the social world would be not impressive, but you see a, they could be new to Twitter. They could have just, you know, jumped on and it has nothing to do with whether or not they are um, a good connection. So I, you know, I think where we get confused is when we we put this blanket statement over somebody <clears throat> and we'll use we'll use the CMO uh, example as the best one where we say that these 50 people have this influence in the CMO space when you know really what an influencer should be we'll use retail for example so there's retail influencers that's all they do is live in the retail space that's an influencer right they live it they breathe it they talk about it that's an influencer but when I think we get into trouble is when we say, okay, we, we sell um, auto parts, but we're going to use the CMO influencer to see if we can move more auto parts. And that, you know, and it's, it, I, it's, Jan, like you said, it's like, we're, we're, we're becoming enamored with the numbers of this person and just automatically associating influence because of the numbers. Yeah. Right. Well, numbers or title. Because again, because a CMO could be, I mean, just I mean, having that, that mantle and then, yeah, that you, there's some assumptions made about someone who has a title that mm -hmm. has that. And so you, I, I absolutely think that that does not equal influence because there are going to be people like within the industry that I'll go, uh, like what you just did with your list. <laughs> like, uh, no, I wouldn't follow <laughs> I mean, because, because what you, again, it kind of circles back around to the generosity thing, right? It's, it's like, your reputation is what you have right. and people, and it gets out. It's like, yeah, they're a big talker, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. And Janet, it's, if you saw the list, I could send it to both of you and you'd look at it and you go 35 out of the 50. You're like, eh, I don't know about that. You know, it's just, and these are people that are commanding big dollars for their influence. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I reached out to one on behalf of one of our brands to see if this person wanted to participate in a tweet chat and uh, the going rate apparently was six thousand dollars and yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah. tweet chat for six wow grand. why and are they calling I, us huh <laughs> <laughs> i'm a dang good <laughs> host <laughs> and, and i thought the person was a friend you know and i'm like wow oh, okay all right i got it yeah you know i, I, I saw something about that on facebook the other day that 
this person was asked to, and I think you saw this too, Mark, actually. Um, this person was asked to do a Twitter chat by a brand and be the guest. And they mm -hmm. were going to sponsor it and do the marketing and stuff. And, and they were like, no, not unless you pay me. Well, gosh, really? You know, wow. where's that line? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know so instead works. of creating a relationship with that brand, which can lead to more work, <laughs> let's just blow ourselves out of the water and just say, no, uh, you got to pay me for yeah. one hour. How much heavy lifting is required in that one hour? And how much marketing do you have? And, and especially with a Twitter chat, that yeah. marketing okay. lasts forever. You know, mm -hmm. people come across tweets and they quote things that you say a year or two, five years later. So oh, no. it's not something that, you know, should be ignored. Um, oh. You know, Christian makes a good point, though, that he says, I can't deny the fact that seeing a follower count of 240K looks nice, though it doesn't take much to see if they're really about it. And Exactly. You can look at their stream and, you know, you can find out real quick if it's just a retweeting machine. I mean, we've gotten into this. Uh oh, they could just. Uh oh. Uh oh, we lost, and he was getting into such good stuff. <laughs> right on a roll. <laughs> there he is. Did you drop yourself? <laughs> I think it really is true, you know, that there are a lot of people that, you know, they're either, you can tell when somebody's fishing to be, you know, the pickle representative for the world. And, you know, that's what they want to do. They want to represent pickles. So in every other post they put up, it's something about pickles, you know, and, and it's really annoying to me. And maybe other people don't see that. Maybe CMOs don't see that when they look at something. They just run the numbers and they go, wow, she mentioned pickled 942 times. She must love pickles. So classic, if you're out there, I, I actually like pickles. Um <laughs> I know I use pickles all the time though, because everybody can relate. You know, it, it's like that's the channel, but it doesn't necessarily mean that anybody's listening to what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Bottom and line. I think, yeah, and it, it really is the, you know, it's one of those things that um, view people as if follower count doesn't matter. I mean, absolutely. I mean, Christian brings up a good point. Um, it depends on what your objective is. You know, if it is about relationships, if it, if it is about, you know, building credibility, then people's follower counts, you know, that really doesn't, it really shouldn't matter. You know, it, it's, it should be the engagement I have with them. Is it the, you know, is it the value? You know, do I find them enchanting? You know, is it delightful when I walk away with interactions with them? I mean, I'm not throwing all the, putting all of this onto every interaction. No, but I'm saying, is that, um, what I walk away with and, and small follower accounts shouldn't really, I mean, I mean, cause again, I don't want to be treated that way. I don't want someone looking at me going, Oh, she doesn't have 20,000 followers. It's like, who cares by who's, by whose yardstick are you measuring me? I don't, I don't like your yardstick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Six inches. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that, it really doesn't matter at all. And I'm going to tell you this horrible, dark little secret that I have. About two weeks ago, I had 30,000 followers. And I was pretty proud of that because they were all, you know, they were trending. I go and check them on fake followers and they were pretty real. A lot of them are newbies because I do a lot of teaching and, you know, people pick me up at conferences and stuff. So I get added there and I got 20,000 followers in one week and it wasn't me. And I found out what it is, is it's a scam that they add a whole bunch of followers to you and then they take you over through one of the apps that you have attached to your account. And over the years, I've accumulated a lot of apps and several of them are dead now. And so people use that app as a backdoor to oh, get wow. your account and then they send spam through it because I was it was making me crazy. I'm still going through every single day and deleting 1,500 by hand because there's no mass block tool. So I have 20,000, well now it's probably more like 10,000 eggs following me. But what the interesting thing is, is that when I, when I cross the 50,000 mark, suddenly I started getting more interest from influence marketers. 
And I've been doing this since 2007, but it's, it's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it is almost a denial. <laughs> Sci-fi funk says it's a, a thousand is a day is almost a denial of service attack. I wish it was because I really want it to stop. Wow. So, you know, but I've read that it's happening to a lot of other people. So go in and check your apps. And I've turned, I've turned off all of my apps and then reinstalled the couple that I still use. Well, that's some good advice. Yeah. yeah. That's very good to know. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, that's just what a, what a nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, I just, I really, um, I appreciate the, just the topic, um, Janet of just generosity. And I love even just the idea that, that, um, as a host, you've created space. There's an act of generosity that you've done for creating space for conversations that, that need to happen. And whether those conversations are, are centered around marketing in a better way or, you know, educating people on using the platforms um, graciously, I think that, that the very act of creating a hospitable place is generous. So I, I appreciate that. And again, like I said, I'm just the product of people I watch and emulate. So. <laughs> well, I, I think really, you know, um, what you're doing on, I, it's a mutual admiration society, folks, because I think Don has been so generous when you were on Blab and doing, doing Blabs about Twitter chats and Twitter, and now what you're doing on Periscope, it really is helping educate people. And that is totally an act of, of generosity. Um, you know, and Mark Meyer says, you know, he's in chat. He says, empathy is the key. And yeah. I think that's really, really a great quality to show in all of your social media, not just, you know, sticking it with Twitter. Sticking yeah, I think Twitter. just the empathy of, uh, maybe it's because I have so many um, friends who are either small business owners or, you know, founders of nonprofits that are just doing good work that I believe in. And I hear their pain. I hear them say, yeah, I just, I don't know what to do with Twitter. I don't have time for it. I don't, I know that I should be in, so on Facebook, just different things. So I, I hear that. And then, you know, it's, you know, to be able to take that and go, you know what, let me craft, let that inform what the content is. It's like, cause I may be out here. I may be fun, maybe fun for me to like run with these, you know, all these early adopters that are, you know, Ooh, we can run like racehorses together, you know, but, but stop and then go and go, well, you know, but maybe people just need someone to pull the cart, you know, it's like, and I don't, I'm not saying that in an arrogant way. I'm saying, but, but if I can take the, the information I know and actually solve a problem and address some pain point, that's, that's, Anyway, that's what that's how I that's how I'm going to operate. That's the value added. And and you look at some people that, you know, have been doing this for for years and years and years who have remained really generous. And maybe they've gone through a lot of phases where, you know, they did the big influencer marketing thing and then they went on the speaking gigs and did all of that stuff. And then they came back and went, OK, I'm just going back to being real because that was too hard. You know, <laughs> it, it's much better to be to be real and to be generous with what you're doing and really enjoy it. And we get that, you know, we as consumers of what you're putting out, we get that and the value. So, you know, people need to do more of that and they also need to keep it up because it ain't easy. And it's really not something that you can take lightly. Like you said, if you're gonna commit to doing this thing every day at the same time, that is a big commitment humongous. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's one of those things that I would never, ever, um, encourage someone to do, to go into lightly because, Oh, this looks like fun. Oh yeah. Oh baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's because really, I mean, it's better to not have done it than to set an expectation level. And then I'm not saying that there, that things don't have seasons and that you things can't run their course. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that at all, but I'm saying go in with your eyes open that it takes work and that it's, it's thankless work. It's like being a parent. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You could crank out some uh, really nasty kids, but it's that quiet, the stuff that no one sees. That's that's where the investment is. And I think that that's a lot of that. And it's yeah, a small enjoy. it's in small investments. Right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Mark says that he ran 150 straight tweet chats, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, and then that is 
that is the idea of, again, when I was in, you know, when I was at TWUBS, I mean, I was interviewing people who had hosted chats for three years, you know, those women's speaker association, and they've been killing it for three years. You don't ag chat. They've been doing things. You don't stay in and have a group of people keep meeting every week if what you're doing is not providing value, if you're not listening. Um, but to, to have that longevity, that long play is so admirable. And so I want to listen to what they have to say. Yeah. And you have to be passionate. Yeah. Ag chat is amazing. And, you know, a lot of people, they, there's so many stereotypes out there about who uses Twitter or who uses oh. social media in general. Nope. And they're yeah. like, what? Farmers chat? And I'm like, do you know about John Deere? Because they did the first real social media with the Furrow magazine, and they still are. They get community better than any other brand in the world because yeah. they love their community. They talk to them. They care about them and they listen to them. And that's what happens with chats, you know, like Twitter chats, um, you know, you get passionate about it and everybody else does too. They feel that passion. They come back and they bring their own passion to it. And, and then it's just, it's amazing. It's wonderful. Yes, so. it really it is. It's such an underutilized tool for um, brands. I just, it's, I, whenever I see people and it's not always brands, I mean, just organizations, you know, when I see people do it, um, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is too. And uh, you know, I, I, I just, I, I wanted to bring you on the show, Dawn, because I love what you're doing. And I've, I've always supported you when you were coming on and doing the blabs and we were competing. So I couldn't have you on the show. So now that we're only sort of competing for the time slot. No, 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 not competing at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, and so, well, I actually, now that my 10 o'clock is freed up, it's like, I, this was, this was one of those places that I wished I could, could come visit. And, um, because I think the conversations are, are important and I love the whole, um, aspect of not just going in willy nilly and just, you know, oh, it's, it's having a purpose. And, you know, I love how you framed mindfulness that it's not, it's not just about, you know, connecting with the universe. It's, you know, it really, it really is. I mean, there's a, a practical aspect of being purposeful. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's what it really comes down to is that our engagement uh, on any of these platforms, it's for a specific purpose. And, and as long as it's aligning with what we're trying to accomplish, that's, that's great. But I, I love the space that you've created and the, and the community. I've, it's been fun getting to meet some new people. Yeah, it's a really fun community and, and we've got some really great folks that that come and hang out. So it, we've been very lucky. Nice. I really want to thank you. And, and why don't you tell people one more time where they can find you on Twitter, on Twitter scope and anywhere else that you like? Yeah, this is this is great because I get to use all my handy because I just got fit Descartes on the socials. Um, so that's, that's me on, uh, except everywhere, except, uh, Snapchat, I'm at Descartes, the word, the letters A T, oh. but if people have Twitter questions, hashtag Twitter and look at, it, I just had part of my hashtag fall off, but Twitter scope, <laughs> if you, if you have questions about how to use Twitter, um, then please hop onto that. Um, I have all of my, my, um, replays are at catch.me slash Descartes. And then I also have a TWUB page at twubs.com slash Twitter scope. And that's where, um, that's my, I call it my living room for um, the, the hashtag for Twitter scope. And then it also has the listing of, I go over different topics each day just to help frame it for people that are listening that, you know, oh, I don't need to do some of the basic stuff, but I, I would love to come in and hear about how small businesses are using Twitter. So they show up on Taco Tuesdays, which is today. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> What's not to love about Taco Tuesdays? I know it's not always about taco restaurants, even though today you could get tacos at Miguel's Jr. But, but anyway, I just, again, I'm just, <laughs> hey, you know what it is? That's the, that's the fun part. <laughs> that's the fun part about getting to do live stream is you literally get to just be yourself. I mean, my, the, my dorkiness embarrasses my kids, but you know what? It's me. This is the package you get. And and who says that learning has to be boring and, uh, you Yay. know, if I can make people laugh while I do it, then I'm, that's, I'm succeeding. So, <laughs> you know what? Life is just not fun if there isn't something to laugh about. <laughs> yeah. If, hey, if we're taking this way too seriously, then you know what? We're taking it too seriously. So. That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> That's right. Well, thank you again. And I want to let everybody know that next week there's no chat because I am on vacation. But the following week on the 23rd, we're going to have Ted Rubin on and we're going to talk about empathy, which is something that he's really, really understands. So, yes, vacay again, Gail. <laughs> It's Valentine's Day. Aww. So we're heading down the coast and we're going to have a wonderful time. But we'll be back with you guys on the 23rd with Ted Rubin. Awesome. Thanks, that should be good. I look forward to that one. Awesome.